da 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 Anyway, I am singing uh, a little theme song of one of the um, top television shows of all time. And um, we have one of the actresses from that show today. Um, she is always in our hearts. And whenever we, whenever I think of the Brady Bunch, I think of this wonderful woman, Miss Susan Olsen. <laughs> Look at my hands just. <laughs> oh my God. Disappear. Yeah. That set. I love your house. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I've been in hypersleep for, for a while, but came out to do the uh, HGTV show. And now I'm back on the, the mothership, the Nostromo. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> can I come? <laughs> oh my God, I want to go. Oh, you might get a little heartburn. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, class, what movie is that background fun from? <laughs> fun. Yes, exactly. <laughs> See, they got it. Alien. Um, yes, Alien. Trolls. No. Um, Trolls. Yeah, it, it happens to be my favorite movie. and um, A lot of my students tease me about that. In fact, I have one, one little girl, her dad really likes movie too and um she brought me a little statue that he made out of um, motorcycle parts oh wow it's a it's a xenomorph of my very own that i just i'm kind of obsessed with alien um now, do, it, i don't really pursue it, acting yeah hmm? alien now, i don't pursue I'm acting but if i could be in an alien movie oh well i think i think you should make it happen manifest I wish, well, if, if, uh, if it's just about where your thinking leads you, it should happen. <laughs> right? Oh, my God. Well. Yeah. Um, but I tend to think of it as a perfect movie because my enjoyment of movies is not just from an actor's standpoint. I'm really into, um, well, I'm very into the music in oh. movies, the editing, um, everything that goes into them. And I, I like to dabble a little bit in everything that goes into them, particularly editing. Do you write music as well? Um, I, I will be. Um, the music, okay, I teach a film production class where, I, and I teach for children. So, you know, we're not talking about the kind of productions that, that would come out of college. Yeah. Um, these are funky little things, some of the weirdest things you've ever seen and it's amazing that we can work so hard and it all comes out so funky um but it's to get kids to think it's for my acting students to get them to think of everything else that goes behind the work and um we come up with the ideas and try to get everybody's ideas in there um a premise maybe a genre and then i write the the script and we shoot it and there's almost always some green screen that we do because um like you hear most actors say that they really wish they were directors not me i i wish i was in special effects <laughs> I love and if i had a do-over i would probably for one i would go to cinema school um, i would have gone to filmmaking school at usc and or my art career would have been in special effects rather than fashion. Do you still enjoy it? So, so that's what we do. We put together these crazy, strange little movies. And um, my favorite part is at the end, putting the music in. And um, I always pay for the music because I, you know, I believe in supporting artists. But yeah. there are so many people that just put their stuff out there. and. Um, and then my, my best friend was in town from New York and she's a drummer and I'm like a really, really terrible bass player. And she always drags me out to a rehearsal studio and tries to get me in touch with my musical side. Yeah. And um, I got a music program and a, an interface so that maybe I can start recording things. 
And um, I realized I have all these loops that, that come with the program. It's so easy. It's going to be so easy to score a little movie. So I'm going to be doing that from now on, too. I love that. I love that. You, <laughs> it makes it more fun. Do you have a music partner? Um, no. Well, kind of. I mean, Andrea, my best friend, she's a partner. Um, my son is a bit of a partner trying to make our computers work together so that, that maybe we can make a song together while he's he's stuck in the other valley. Um, we're in this lockdown and I can't visit him. I know. But I can see him, you know, through technology, so that's really good. Thank God. And um, right now, I, I I would have called off the class because I only have two students in my filmmaking class. But it was such a challenge that I decided to go ahead with it. We are going to have to make our little student student film using Zoom. So we're making it based entirely on social media. Yeah. Um, there have been a couple of movies, Searching is one of them, that were based, you know, pretty much all you see is a computer screen. Right. So that's going to be our, um, our challenge. And I started to ask you something last night, and, um, you know, my ADD got the better of me, and I never completed the question, but I would like to use you. <laughs> and it only, um, it only amounts to using your picture in a fake Facebook site. But I was, I was storing these, I have two students who are um, young girls, and I was storing their pictures and just happened to come by the picture of you holding the heart. Oh. And I went, he's Mr. Merkin. He's perfect. He's, he's the perfect guy to play this girl's favorite teacher. Oh. So you're her science teacher, if, if you agree. I, I would love to be. I would love to be. Awesome. <laughs> uh, yes. Is it no? Are these scripts written? Are they improvised? Are they a mix? It's written. It's right here. Oh. Um, only eighteen pages. Okay. But because um, we try to make them fifteen to thirty minutes, and um, it. But there's going to be a lot of improvisation too. Okay. In fact, I I was telling the girls that I'd like to do each scene according to script and also just improvised. Because it's two girls in social media. And in, in order to keep that engaging, I think it has to be as natural as possible. Right, right. Um, wow. I, now, what are the ages of the class? I mean, for the students, for the classes you teach? They go um, from six to 18. Um, generally speaking, I don't usually have anybody over the age of 16, okay. but, um, and I try, I have had some five-year-olds, but they were able to read, you know, for regular acting class, you know, it's fine if they can't read, but for the filmmaking class, it, they really need to be able to, um, read their script. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good to know for those people out there who, who would love to get, in touch with you to be in your workshop. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Although, you know, I will always make exceptions too, because, you know, if they've got a, a parent who will work with them on memorization, actually the little kids end up working harder than the big kids because they have to memorize. Yeah. Because they can't walk out on stage holding a script. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm glad I'm under 18 so I can be in your film. <laughs> That's right. Yes, but you know, only for a couple more months. Oh, right. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. Now, oh, so when you do these films, do you do you film it all at once? Do you do bits and pieces of it? How does that work? Well, it, they started out um, as acting camps, which I will still do, where the kids come in every day for five days. It's like a little summer camp. Um, and we do it during uh, like ho school holidays. And those are pretty hectic. But, um, you know, the first day will be 
coming up with the ideas. I try to have a script by the second day. But it's much better when I have um, a whole session to teach a class because I have a, a week in between sessions. So right. the shortest session is eight weeks. So you figure, you know, you've got a good five sessions of filming. Um, oh, good. It, it gets okay. hectic when, when I do the camps. Yeah. And I'm having to edit everything each night. But, you know, when I teach the class, um, I have a whole week to edit things before we get back together. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That is fun. And you've been doing this how long? Um, the filmmaking probably, well, the camp started out maybe four years ago and then teaching it as an actual class where, like, I'll bring in other films and have kids look at them. I'll bring in the laptop and show them different things that I'm doing and how to edit. Um, I like getting them involved in what music should I use and, and things like that. Um, and that I've been doing for just under two years. Nice. Nice. Wow. But they, I mean, they're weird. These are weird productions because they try to take everybody's ideas. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. I mean, look at some of the best films are, you know, weird. Yeah. I mean, look yeah. at um, uh, Twin Peaks. Oh, well, see, I love that. Oh, and I, I want to do a technique. Now, I want to show the kids the, um, in, the, in the original series, there, there were scenes, or at least one dream sequence that was filmed backwards. So everybody had to do their lines backwards and then it was run forward so you could have somebody um you know do some impossible physical feat in the scene and the whole thing was just so surreal but the the actors had to learn their lines phonetically backwards wow <laughs> <laughs> oh that, my was a, God. that was a, i don't know if i could <laughs> Oh it, it's a challenge, but you know, I think that's a pretty cool special effect. Yo, of. gosh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what else? What else is up with you? Well, that is wonderful. By the way, I want to thank you for your visits to Meet the Biz, Performing Arts Studio West, for um, uh, Actors for Autism. I mean, you are such a loving, giving human being. Oh, thank you. It's, it's easy. I mean, it's always been fun. My son is on the spectrum. Um, he, he's actually a pretty good actor. I, I haven't seen it yet. But, um, well, I mean, he used to sit in on my classes now and then. Right. And um, well, I remember he, he came to Actors for Autism. Him. Yes, he did. Yes, yes. I loved meeting him. Oh, he's a doll. He's, he's, right. he's so, he's so unique and such a, I think he's such a good example of what I call living with artism because, you know, autism very often is a window into the artistic realm. And um, I've always thought, well, also because people used to talk in front of him and they talk about his autism and he's autistic and um, i Finally, I said, Mike, do you know what that means? That you're autistic? And he said, yeah. I said, well, what does it mean? He goes, it means I draw really well. I said, that's right. It's because you can do those things that you see the world a little differently. And so sometimes some things are harder for you. And that's why you have a lady that helps you and blah, blah, blah. And I really do think that um, the parallels are, are absolutely there. I, I've always felt like my brain wasn't wired normally. You know, um, I still, you know, the word normal, I, I, uh, Chris Hendricks, a friend of mine, musician who we interviewed the other day, amazing guy. Oh, yes. He has, um, he does shirts and one of it, it says define normal. Um, and it, yeah. it's funny, funny because when Jerry Jewell and I interviewed and hung out with Norman Lear, she was wearing her Define Normal, but it looked like Define Norman. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. So, <laughs> cool. I am so there with you about the, the normal thing. I mean, I, I, I think everybody has certain issues. I mean, the first thing interesting because I love to act, which I haven't done a lot lately because I enjoy teaching so much more or at this moment in my life. And I also love putting together this documentary, which will have, probably be out in three th year 3000. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, no, it's a couple of years. Um, but the thing is with, see, the, my brain, the thing that I, when you first said about, oh, would you like to be in it? I went, yes. And part of me goes, oh my God, the lines, the lines, <laughs> memorizing Hello. the lines. So, I mean, that's one of my issues. I mean, I, I love to do improvise and I, I love to do a, a, a script because emotionally I've gotten through to that point where I can just flow with it. Um, that's awesome. As long as the lines don't get in, in my way. That's a thing that, and I could teach it to others too. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm much better at teaching than I am at doing. Yeah. Um, oh, why? But I know that my things work. Yeah. You know, because I have tried them. But um, yeah, I mean, that's that's like the gist of of what I teach. Really, is memorize your emotional script, mm. memorize all of your intentions, and the words will follow. Oh, and make sure that you have those intentions really clear when you do your homework. And I know homework's a really icky word, um, but I, I think it's so important. I think that having spending some time with your own emotions, especially if you have to do what we call substitution, because you know, let's say your your character has killed somebody, and mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> you. You don't know what that's like. Yes. As hopefully you haven't done that. Right. Hopefully. And don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Only but maybe, maybe you've done something similar. Maybe you've done something that gives you the same feelings that the character has, be it guilt or accomplishment or whatever. And when you're doing your, your homework, you're rehearsing your lines with that emotion. And, and the ideal thing is to have that emotion drive you to the lines mm. so that nothing else could come out of your mouth. Um, and if ever anybody doesn't remember their line and they can't come up with something that makes sense, then I know they're not really in the scene. Mm. They may be acting real good, but you don't really know what you're saying if you can't come up with something to save the scene. Yeah, to really know what you're saying. And like you said, I love how you, I mean, that's such a brilliant message to emotionally, if you know emotionally what's going on and then you flow with the emotion, it, it'll come. Yeah, yeah, and let, let the other actors' lines, let them be the cues that trigger the emotions because then the lines will, will follow. I, I have a video of this guy who memorized the words. but So he spits the words out in the scene, but they're in the wrong order. So the meaning is completely changed. So he can't really know what he's saying. <laughs> Right. And he got hung up on the words. And, you know, there are some playwrights and things, people that will, you know, make sure that you memorize everything, you know, word for word. Um, and, and there are word memorizing tricks that you can do. Yeah. But for the most part, it's like really, really get that emotional script, that, that, that feeling script in your head first. And what I love, too, is when you get that and then you allow it to happen in the moment, you might be surprised by a few of those emotions or a lot of them that come out because you are in the moment. Exactly. And, and even um, like if, if you're doing your homework and say you're remembering something that happened when you were five. Yeah. If you have, you know, it, when you do that, not only do your lines come back to you, but maybe a little glimmer of that, maybe a picture, like a postage stamp size picture comes into your head and it triggers yeah. an emotion. And you might find yourself like Dee Wallace. 
who walked out of the scene. Yeah. Because that's what her emotions told her to do. Yeah. And it was great. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. Uh, I have to say I wore this shirt just because it reminded me of this 70s. Even it's, it's so probably. Mike Brady. <laughs> now, but you got to have checkered pants. Well, I it. don't have checkered <laughs> pants. I have underwear. <laughs> I and love it. <laughs> Zoom, I have Zoom pants. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I love all these like news anchors and stuff that are wearing their suits. You know, and they're <laughs> they're going commando underneath the suits. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Well, you you, you always imagine what people are wearing. <laughs> yeah, know? especially when you want to. Um, not be scared of them. That's a Brady Bunch uh, lesson, which I find myself telling students. I, I get students that have their first audition. I'm like, well, imagine everybody's in their underwear or even on the toilet because you know they do that. They yeah. really do do that. And if you think about that, they won't be so um, menacing and you know, up on their pedestal. Right. Because that was another thing Dee talked about, which is, um, I loved what she said. She said she'll take her students and put them up for, for parts in films that she's in. And she said every single one of them bombed. <laughs> uh, I know it. For, what? Really? All of them? I know. And she said because they got to the audition and they forgot that they knew what to do. And I had, like... Probably my best student, um, she's a special favorite of mine. I know, I, I tend to do that. Um, but she called me, she had gotten signed and she had an audition. This is a girl that during showcases, she'd get up on that stage and her command of the stage was almost scary. And, and she had the audience in the palm of her hands. And she calls me up at, her first audition she's going I can't do this I can't do this I'm too scared I really can't do this but I thought I'd call you first I'm gonna drive home I'm like no 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 don't like you've got to remember who you are yeah. you're the girl that 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 steals the showcase you are that girl and don't think about them think yeah. about everything that you think of when you're on stage think about let let the role get so absorbed in that role sometimes if you're really scared that can give you the, the subconscious desire to hide in that role mm. and to be that other person let that work for you mm. and I, I think she did um but she got through it the main thing was that she she went in for the audition you can't you can't let the fear monster win no no and um, you know, I think too, I was going back to what you said about, you know, the homework is like, uh, you know, I think too, with me, certain things like homework or um, memorizing, uh, for me, it is you have to shift your whole outlook and look at it, you know, look at it in a positive way or look at mm -hmm. it as, as, wait a minute, I could see the positive side, you know, like, the glass is half empty or half full. Yeah. So you look yeah. at whatever you are either fearful of and or whatever that is and go through it. And by doing that, oh, I mean, I have to say, I had trouble swallowing pills, actual physical mm. pills mm -hmm. until age 35. I'm only, wow. I'm only 28, so I don't know. That. But, Isn't that weird how that works? I know. Um, but... I finally, thanks to my therapist, <laughs> um, said, you're not going to choke. And I learned, and also lately, too, I just relax and it goes with it. And now I, you know, I got through that fear. I mean, there mm -hmm. are those little fears, and then those are other bigger fears, but you can get through them and change your outlook. Well, they say... 
we can program our brains. And you know, even when you're doing a scene, it's a lot like programming. You're, you're programming what you're, you're going to be doing. But technically, we can program ourselves to enjoy waking up and taking a cold shower first thing in the morning. Technically, we can do that. We don't do that because that would take a great deal of effort. But, you know, yeah. if you put your mind to it, there's kind of nothing you can't do, really. It's true. There's nothing. Yeah. Thank you for I mean, visiting. You know, too. maybe you can't fly. Well, but. in your mind. <laughs> or an airplane. <laughs> yes, there you go. Wow. Uh -huh. But you know, you can and and doing um, the homework really is programming your brain so that those other lines and those other things that happen in the scene cue um, what you're feeling. And and I gotta tell you, you know, I teach kids, but somebody will actually go home and do their homework. I can always tell. I can always tell because then when they come back in, there's something that they do on stage. That's them. It's it's theirs. Now there, there's something organic. It's one of those words we toss around, but it, it's true. Oh. It's something that naturally happens. I'll go, you did homework. I'll go, uh-huh. And I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> Except that one time that I thought it was wrong, but it turned out I was right. No. Um, but I you can tell, you can always tell. You have an amazing smile, by the way. I just want to like, oh, thank you. I was looking at it, um, you know, before we, I was just looking online at the IMDB just to, you know, refresh myself and which everybody should do. I'm going to mention this in, in a couple of the classes after the interview, after you watch the interview, look on IMDB and look at different places. And do you have a website or do you have about your class? Not anymore. I was too lazy. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I suppose I should do that. I got back on social media just because of the HGTV show. Right. But I wasn't you, even doing don't, that. You still do that, right? You. St uh, I, mean, I do now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm there. I don't do a whole lot of posting. Um, do you still do your I, radio show? No, we. Um, that whole radio in general has changed a lot um frank and i had moved to kabc mm. and um it's it's become like a pay-to-play mm. type of thing and geez i mean one of the best jobs i ever had was was at klsx doing a radio show with ken ober we used to follow howard stern and we never knew until we got into the station we didn't know how long the show was going to be and our longest show was five hours oh and our sh shortest show was a half hour it all depended on how long howard went um but so you know doing radio for fun is fun for a while <laughs> for a while and then, yeah. yeah um so we, we just, did, when it became pay to play, we just kind of went, eh. And you found- We'll you find have, something else. You found something else and you, you're living your joy right now, doing these classes and-, and Yeah, yeah, I think, um, yeah, like I say, it, when you have a job, it's not real lucrative, but when you right. have a job that you, you take on because it's a creative challenge. <laughs> And I mean, to me, I'm, I'm gaining so much from having to deal with you know, the circumstances that, that just come along. Um, you know, the little things like on one production, two girls wanted to sing the theme to, um, oh, L Lemony Snicket's, that, that show, that wonderful, wonderful show. Um, and so they did, and they did a cappella. And, and then I had gotten this soundtrack, and it had the, the instruments separated, and the cello was on its own. And I put it behind the song. I was like, oh my gosh, this works. Okay, we're doing that. And they, the girls sound so good. 
Oh my God. I love little it. things like that, or, or like having too many students. I had 14 students in a, um, in a camp. And so we did a TV show with commercials so that everybody would have a part. But, you know, 14 principal characters is too many to keep track of. And we also, we wanted to do something in black and white. And that was like, you might have seen it, that um, did a parody of The Twilight Zone. Oh, wow. And one little boy, he, and I loved him so much. I was like, oh, I'll give you anything you want. Um, he wanted his name to be Sewage. Sewage? So, it, Sewage, yeah. I guess that was a new word that he had learned and he really liked it. Yeah. So the, the premise was that he, he was a ghost that was haunting the toilet. Right. And um, because he had been teased and bullied for having the last name of Suwaj. Suwaj. I love yes. that. My word, I want to be <laughs> plethora. <laughs> plethora, okay. Plethora. I like Asweepe. But <laughs> <laughs> Asweepe. Asweepe. Um, like, yo, that's how you pronounce my name. Asweepe. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and, and visiting us at uh, Meet the Biz, Performing Arts Studio West. And uh, oh, thank you. It's always fun. I love you. Well, and I love what you do, yeah. and I love your students, and it's really fun. Well, and I think acting is good for everybody, whether you want to be an actor or not. I tell parents, you know, your kid will start ordering in a um, restaurant with more confidence. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, oh, well, know what you want. Yeah, know what you want. All right. Well, I will, uh, I will see you uh, hopefully soon. Yeah. Mwah. Mwah. Take care. Stay well. Yes, you too. Okay, yes, yes. Um, these are my most rare and valuable earrings. <laughs> I made them. Oh, Genuine my. toilet paper. I could get mugged for these. You actually made those? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're real toilet paper? I have several paper? styles, too. <laughs> yeah, real toilet paper. You know what? I've, I've used things to, you know, toughen it up. When did you make um, those? Um, the very beginning. Well, the first time I went to the store and they were out of toilet paper. And then immediately I saw that somebody else had made them on Facebook, like using little seed beads. And those were very brilliant too. But um, I went to my friend Sheree Curry's house wearing my, I, the first ones I made out of Fimo clay. And then I thought, no, 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 these don't look real enough. I need to use real, real potty paper. I think you should. I made a bunch of them. And, um, all the librarians at the Stevenson Ranch Library have them now, <laughs> but nobody's working anymore. So. Yeah, well, you know what to get as a Christmas present now. <laughs> Toilet paper earrings. So if you ever need I'm also paper. finding some very creative masks. <laughs> oh yeah? And you can actually put your own design on a mask. I may, I may be doing something with that. I'm just hoping that we can get past this as quick as possible, but. Oh, from your lips to the universe's ears. Yeah. So. All right, don't use all your toilet paper. Okay. Get one sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Love you, bye. Love you.